Well, here's my CD player. It's been giving me problems in the last few weeks. It's been skipping tracks. And uh, that gets to be pretty annoying, especially when you're playing loud volumes. So I want to show you what I did to correct that problem. Before I open it up and show you what I did to service this uh, player, it's a little bit of background. This is a uh, Luxman DZ112 CD player. And uh, I bought it uh, about five years ago uh, off of Craigslist from a gentleman in uh, Miami, Florida. And it was manufactured back in June 1989. So it's, uh, it's pretty, uh, a pretty old player, about 30 years old. And back then the cost was, I believe, around $600. Yeah, $600. So I bought it for 55 bucks, knowing that it had a few problems. And one of them was uh, the uh, transport door uh, would not open. It was stuck. And the other thing that uh, was a problem, over here one of the buttons was actually stuck a little bit too. So I took it in uh, to get it serviced, uh, but before I did that I uh, ordered a, uh, a new belt and uh, gave that to the technician because I'm not an electronics expert and I needed somebody to surface it. So I've had this about five years now and it's only recently in the last couple of weeks that it's been giving me problems. Here's the back of the Luxman. Just to show you the connections, um, again, I started using this the first three years that I owned it, primarily using it as a regular CD player with uh, RCA connectors to the back of my preamp, and that's my preamp right there, by the way. And so it, uh, you know, the old red and white tipped uh, RCA connectors. On the back, it has uh, analog out, so you can have it fixed, so you can control it with your, your volume over there. And then um, on the front, if you use these variable connectors, you can uh, adjust the volume uh, on the front panel of the, the CD player. But a couple of years ago, I, I bought what's called a Cambridge uh, Audio DAC Magic Plus. It's a digital to analog converter. And I wanted to do that so that it could also include some streaming plus use the digital out capability of this particular CD player. So here's a kind of a cheapy um, digital coaxial cable that you could plug in the back. And then I would just plug this other end to the back of the uh, Cambridge Deck Magic. So that gave me um, some improvement sound wise because on the Deck Magic Plus, it had a 24 bit DAC chip. Uh, the DAC chip in this one's uh, rated at 18 bits. So that was kind of a, a transition. And then in six months ago, I decided to spend not just $200 for a DAC, but I actually spent about $2,000 on a new and better DAC with a lot of more capabilities. And um, that was a MyTech uh, Brooklyn DAC Plus. So uh, let's get ready to look inside and see what we can do or what I did to fix right. it. I've removed the top taken a, a couple of precautions too. Uh, one, I've already opened up the, um, the CD tray and then turned off the machine. And for safety's sake, I've, I've unplugged it so there's no power. But uh, again, we've got to be careful. Um, like in uh, some other pieces of equipment that I have, you know, capacitors, they could be holding a charge and might zap you a little bit. Um, if the unit was running, there's a caution label over here saying that there's an invisible uh, light beam or laser beam that could be uh, damaging to your eyes. So just a couple of uh, things to think about there. And again, I'm not an elect electronics uh, technician, um, just doing some practical things that might be of help to you. So let's, uh, let's go in for a closer look. Depending on the age of uh, your piece of equipment, vintage uh, I'm talking about, you you may open it up and find that it's full of uh, dust or hair or who knows, even, maybe even mouse droppings. But uh, whatever you do, maybe sometimes when you get started, uh, I always like to use a little bit of canned air. You can buy at a electronic shop or even on Amazon and allows you to go in and spray and kind of clean some things up. Um, so next, um, let's, let's take... Uh, Let's take off this uh, arm on this uh, disc clamp. Before I start, um, just want to let you know I went on went online, kind of Googled uh, CD player skipping 
read some um, dialogue amongst people that have had these kind of problems, looked at a couple of uh, YouTube videos as well to kind of get an idea. And so it kind of boiled down to maybe it could be uh, a dirty uh, laser uh, photo cell, for example, or it could be a tracking mechanism. So let's take a look. And this is kind of what I did. Again, uh, you may see something similar to this, might be held down with a screw. This arm, this arm clamp actually has a spring on the back so this can kind of bounce up and down. And mine in particular has just a, uh, a kind of a, a little plastic press fit. So I just put a screwdriver in there, unhooked it, and now I've actually uh, revealed the, uh, the mechanism in the clamp, uh, this clamp that uh, spins when this is pressed down on your, your CD. Here's a close-up view of the uh, uh, transport mechanism. It's a, a linear tracker. And over here we have the, uh, the actual enclosure for, for the laser and uh, the photo cell. And if I move it around, you see it, it, it does, it does move around and there's a, a laser underneath, I believe, and some uh, mirror. And this is obviously the motorized part of uh, the disc clamp that works in conjunction with the arm. So when I opened it up, I was looking at it for two things. One, I want to clean that darn, uh, that lens, that photo cell. So I used, uh, obviously, a um, Q-tip, which I had in stock because... Um, I do a lot of cleaning on my cassette decks as well. One of the other uh, interesting YouTube videos I, I was watching, somebody actually used a pencil eraser. And uh, to me, that, that didn't seem to make too much sense. I worried about residue or damage. So I just ended up using a Q-tip, going on there, cleaning it, taking my time. I didn't use any solution or anything like that. And then uh, I used it another Q-tip um, I went to explore these guides and the guides actually had some white residue, some white grease. And you, uh, you might be able to see a little bit. There is some little bit of residue and then there's some white, like lithium grease inside here for the gears and things like that. But there was more grease on this side than this side. So my, my assumption was it was tracking and I might be on track three on playing a CD and this laser mechanism's going along and it got stuck and all of a sudden it just jumped. So it wasn't uncommon to see, uh, I'm playing track three and it jumped to track, uh, 10 and all of a sudden, blah, 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 blah. and it's, uh, like I said earlier, it's very annoying when it makes, makes that noise at, uh, loud volumes. So I just went, uh, went in with another Q-tip and I used some, um, See, isopropyl alcohol. Again, I use that for cleaning pinch rollers and heads and stuff on my cassette decks. So I use that and I just slowly went, cleaned all that white grease off underneath, did it again, changed, you know, used multiple, uh, multiple Q-tips. And then finally, uh, since I didn't have any um, uh, grease to replace, I just went in and used something I had in, in my kit some glide bearing oil, and I just put some drops along there. Okay, and then moved, you know, and um, kind of picked up the excess uh, oil that might be underneath. And uh, that seemed to do the trick. Now that what I know I'm doing. So that was kind of the, the, the focus there, is cleaning those linear guides and then cleaning that photo cell on top. So it's, uh, it's time to put her back together. All right, so we'll just put the kind of the disc clamp back on. It has some area that I guess it kind of moves on and then uh, end up putting this back in a hole and then just snapping it into place. So that works pretty good. If you um, if you go to CVS and you uh, need to clean some stuff, they do sell cotton swabs like the one I was using. Uh, they actually have, um, they're made out of wood instead of uh, the kind of, uh, what, paper, rolled paper, fiber, or whatever, and they seem to work pretty good when I'm cleaning uh, some of my gear. Okay, the disc clamp is uh, back on. Let's uh, put a CD on there, close it up, see what happens. 
Looks like it's a uh, reading the CD. That's good. Let's see if it put it on track one here. It looks like spin a little bit. And technically uh, it's playing. So uh, there you have it. Uh, hope this uh, video was uh, some help to you. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you like this video, hit that like button and I would, uh, wouldn't mind if you like to subscribe. So have a great day. Take care.